Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning, my, my dear brothers and sisters. Since many of us will not be able to receive the Holy Eucharist in the forms of bread and wine, let us begin by offering an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord, our God, for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, O Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whoever corrects a scoffer wins abuse. Whoever rebukes the wicked gets hurt. A scoffer who is rebuked will only hate you. The wise, when rebuked, will love you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are ready to forgive rather than to condemn, knowing that you are always in our midst. May we never be guilty of an unforgiving heart. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Today, being the 23rd Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him away from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. Proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. Reprimand publicly those who do sin, so that the rest also will be afraid. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Owe oh, nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart, though you may have to reprove your fellow. Man, do not incur sin because of it. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Both kindness and truth are important. The two go together. Words taken from the Old Testament book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 3. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Words taken from today's gospel according to St. Matthew. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's Gospel is different from most of the readings. Instead of Jesus speaking spiritual truths to his listeners, he concentrates today on human interpersonal relationships. One of the most damning factors found in our families, in our society, and even in the Christian church is the inability to resolve conflicts. The word conflict is, def is defined as a serious disagreement or argument, typically a protracted one. Other words for conflicts include dispute, quarrel, squabble, disagreement to all-out war. We see this in our society today, the polarization of so many issues pro-life versus pro-choice, the right to bear arms and gun control, 
social injustice, and racial inequality. We see this on a daily basis in politics and on our streets. In the Christian church, we too see conflicts that tear apart the fabric of the good news of Jesus. Being ordained for many years, I have spoken throughout the years with many pastors of different churches who have shared with me conflicts that had existed and exist in their congregations. I have heard and have seen the result of all this perishes to the infighting that exists between families and individuals within a given parish. Our Lord addresses this in today's reading, and it should serve as a reminder of the need to resolve conflicts. It should also be said that no one will agree with everyone on a given position, an ideal, or an ID. St. Paul faced many conflicts in the churches he established during his ministry. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 25 and 27, he speaks of the need for Christian unity among diversity. And I quote, so that there should be no division in the body of Christ, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you are a part of it." End of quote. Paul goes on to speak in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 and 24, because Paul saw those who were opposed for reconciliation, and he writes, You say, I have the right to say anything, but not everything is beneficial. Or I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek to do their own good, but the good of others. And everything must be done so that the church may be built up. I remember attending a seminar for facilitators addressing the problem of conflict and its resolution for a company I was with for close to 17 years. After the main speaker's presentation, we broke into a smaller group, management and employees alike, and each of us had to address others with conflicts that we had with them. It was difficult addressing others and having others address you. We would begin with a formula like this. You know the name of the individual. I am the emotion, disappointed, saddened, when you blank do this. The person that you were speaking to had to repeat what you said, and then you talked about it, seeking in the end resolution to that problem that existed. You know, conflicts have existed from the beginning of time, but conflicts can be resolved if it is done constructively and not destructively. You may not have complete resolve of all issues, but at least you've made the attempt and you let the other person know what you are thinking. 
So my dear brothers and sisters, what is the other alternative? Keeping deep-seated disagreements and dislikes with one, within oneself? Or instead, trying to resolve issues? One would rather keep things in oneself where it festers or to try to find resolve. This is what Jesus is speaking about in today's gospel. I am sure that even the apostles did not always agree with each other and there were conflicts among them. But in the gospel, Jesus promotes through his teachings understanding love and forgiveness for past wrongs. I am reminded of what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21, when Peter asks him, Lord, how many times should I forgive someone? As many as seven times? Continuing, Jesus replied to Peter, no, you should forgive 70 times 7. Some versions say 70 times, but let, let us go with the larger number. Now, by my calculations, 70 times 7 is exactly 490 episodes of where we are called upon to forgive. My dear brothers and sisters, may the words of our Lord bring all of us to a higher understanding and to a higher moral standard of seeking resolution with each other. For it is our Lord who concludes in today's gospel by saying, Amen, Amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, for which they are to pray about, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. May each of us heed the words of our Lord and put on the fruits of the Spirit of love, kindness, and mostly forgiveness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. He who rebukes a man gets more thanks in the end than one with a flattering tongue. most holy trinity which we make in remembrance of the passion resurrection and ascension of our lord jesus christ and in honor of the blessed virgin mary and all the saints that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through jesus christ our lord amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, accept this oblation from our hands and teach us to love with conviction and without pretense. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks. Christ. Father, a powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. Empowered by your grace and strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our own care. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. Today, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless, the unemployed, those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Let us also remember in our prayers today all abused and neglected children in our world, all those victims of violence both here and abroad, all those who serve in our armed forces both here and abroad, for each other, and all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy, numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray, instructed by our Savior teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. 
Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard in healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father and unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for uniting us in this Eucharistic celebration. Grant us the wisdom to apply your truth faithfully, so that we may be reconciled to who you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. brothers and sisters, again I welcome you as we celebrate Holy Mass. It is my prayer that we all might remember each other in prayer and the difficulties that we have in our world today. May we pray for others in our family. May we pray for our nation. And finally, let us pray for all our faithful departed. May God bless you and your loved ones on this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 